All right, guys, it's day two. I went to uh, Sears and Harbor Freight today, and I picked up some pretty cool-looking tools at uh, Sears. And I uh, also got uh, some more gloves and a few more little things uh, at Harbor Freight that I might need. But I want to show you this cool uh, Craftsman snap ring pliers. I don't know if y'all seen these before. These are made in America, Craftsman. And they got a little switch right here on the front. So in this position, with the handles out, you know, when you mash, you're going like this. You flip this switch over, and now with the handles out, it's open, and when the handles are closed, you're going in. Do it again, like this. Flip the switch, like that. Pretty cool. Uh, and it comes with a bunch of different tips. And I also picked up a set of Craftsman uh, pliers that's got the offset where you can get to those big snap rings that don't have a hole in them. And these were on sale for like eight bucks. So, yeah, I paid $22. Well, actually, these were on sale. These were knocked down to 22 but I actually only paid like $17 for them. And I'm gonna think I'm gonna enjoy these, especially with this project. That's right, so what I did. I went out to the other shop and got my 1984. You can't really tell it's ripped, but this is an 84 Chevy factory truck manual, shop manual. And this is your best friend when you're doing any kind of rebuilds on transmission transfer case. It has the complete. Uh, rebuild instructions for the transmissions on and transfer cases this particular manual lists a 205 transfer case see so we got the 205 case which looks like this and this only came in the one tons and then the 208 transfer case which has basically uh, the cross section you can see this is the output this is kind of uh, turned over where the output would really be over here and it also has the showing the strut rod uh, this is for the automatic transmission. With a manual transmission, it does not call for that strut rod that would attach right here. All right. It also tells you how the bolts should go in. This is the automatic transmission attachment. This is the manual transmission attachment. Notice the difference in the size of the adapter from automatic to manual. And then it goes into some troubleshooting. Uh, and the exploded diagram, which I know it's going to be hard for y'all to see on here, uh, which is kind of is really nice to have when you're putting stuff back together. Front output shaft rear bearing removal is basically taking a slide hammer with a special tool here, tool J26941. And it's grabbing that bearing. We got a wood block with a C clamp. And let's see if we can get it here. Front output shaft, rear bearing replacement, remove bearing using Remover tool J26941 and slide hammer. 
install a new bearing using driver handle and installer and remove installer tools and check bearing position to be sure oil feed hole is not cover covered. Also be sure bearing is seated flush with the edge of the case board to allow room for thrust bearing assembly. Alright. It's showing a wood block and a C clamp. Alright, well I couldn't find the picture of that tool, but it's basically a blind bearing puller similar to this. Probably a little smaller, a lot smaller here. And uh, so we're going to do the basically the same thing, except first we got to knock the bearings out to get to the race. So I'm going to go ahead and set you up, and uh, I'm going to take my little air tool, I hope, and, and get those bearings out of there. Alright, so I'm hoping what I can do is just notch this bearing. I may have to notch it on two sides, but I'm hoping I can just notch it. Uh, just get a little notch going, and then I can knock them roller bearings out. Hopefully. All you need to do is get one of them out. The rest of them should come out pretty easily, hopefully. And get between them and pry them out. See these down. Maybe you can see these roller bearings have little tips on them. That's what's keeping them from coming out too damn easy. Once you get a few of them out, then they come out pretty good. Especially with a good magnet. So now, what I need to do is figure out how I'm going to put my slide. I, mean, I got to have somewhere holding this down. All right, guys. Well, I got that bearing out. This is where I notched it right here. And I uh, just took my slide hammer, got it out. Here's the case it was in. I didn't film it because my mom was out here and she's wanting to talk about stuff. So... I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this and I'll film this one how I got it how I set it up over here first thing I'm going to do is we're going to put a notch in it and get these bearings out just like I showed you in the other part of the video and then I'll set it up over here and I'll record how I get this bearing out all right so the only difference between this bearing and the other bearing was this one had a cage in it and I did get a little bit deep, but I was able to pry that cage out. What we're going to do is I got one board mounted in my vise. I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to stick this over, over. And then, of course, we're going to stick our... And we need to get really as far over to this edge as possible, center, 
and keep the uh, C clamp. It does put a good bit of pressure on this case, and I see a damn boogered up hole right there. And I wonder about, I may have to, looks like it's full of dirt. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna put our slide hammer in on this. And the reason it's easier to turn it over is so on this slide hammer, you can hold, you can hold the, these things here with one hand and we want to make sure that we're not in the groove and then with the other hand we can pull down I gotta have some seat on it Why one comes out good, the other one don't. It's got to be the difference in the thickness of that bearing race. And we'll be able to see the difference when I get this one out, I can show you the, the thickness difference. I can feel it. So I know it's different. So if you can see, this is pretty much, I've, I've pretty much pulled everywhere I could pull and it's just bent up. And you can see the one I took out of that other one, how much a thicker, I mean it did not bend this lip none, but one thing I do notice is I just barely notched one side and, and not even hardly the other one. And this one, I pretty much got too deep. I notch both sides. So now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pry between the surface of this race and the surface of this aluminum and I don't want to do that but I'm gonna have to. And she just ain't gonna go. Just ain't gonna do it. No way for it to go. Let lip being damaged like it. You can't pull it. The only thing you could do would be to cut it, burn it out. The aluminum's gonna melt quicker than steel, but this is this is thin steel. Might be able to do something. I don't know. Man, I was hoping that would be as good as that other one, but this is just a cheap ass bearing. Probably about a lot of bearings I'm gonna be putting back in here. So, fortunately, it ain't looking too good for getting, for using this end. I may have to use the other end even though it is wore out. I believe it will still work. So I'm not even gonna fool with this. I'm gonna use the other one. 